Before we begin our journey into the world of Arduino, let us talk a bit about the Arduino platform so you can have a better understanding of what it is and how it works. Arduino is an open source platform. What this means is that its design, layout and structure can be manufactured and improved upon by anyone. The main benefit of a product or software being open source is that many individuals contribute to making it better and the collective knowledge of different folks working together contributes to consistent improvements over time resulting in higher quality. By prototyping, we mean that it can be used to rapidly build and prove out ideas for electronics projects. The Arduino can also read inputs such as light from a sensor, voltage differences, temperature changes, etc. and convert these measurements into an output performing tasks such as activating a motor, turning on an LED, and even publishing a tweet out to Twitter. It is easy to use for beginners and can be used by electronics hobbyists, makers, Internet of Things engineers, or even entrepreneurs as a means to quickly try out their ideas. Essentially, you can tell your board what to do by sending a set of instructions to the microcontroller on the board. Let's quickly take a look at the Arduino website. You can find the website by just uh, typing in Arduino and you know, doing a Google search. And it should come up. It should be the first result. So I'm going to click on the Arduino Home. And here is the Arduino main website. Here you'll find a lot of information about the Arduino platform, see projects built by others, get tutorials, and learning resources, and a network with other makers. The version of Arduino we will be using for our class is the Arduino Uno. It is the most popular flavor of Arduino. You can think of it as the basic model and it has the following characteristics. The board is based on the 80 Mega 328P microcontroller. And when we say microcontroller, what we mean here is it's a small computer on a single integrated circuit containing a processor core, memory, and programmable input-output peripherals. It has 14 digital input-output pins. These are located here on the right-hand side of the board. There are six analog input pins located on the left-hand side of the board. It has a 16 megahertz quartz crystal and 32K of flash memory. Um, as you'll notice, that is a small amount of memory, so we have to be always concerned and uh, be mindful when we're writing our Arduino programs to conserve memory as much as possible. There's also a USB connection at the top that we plug into our computer in order to upload code to the Arduino. And there's a DC power jack that can be used to provide additional power to the Arduino microcontroller. The operating voltage of the Arduino is 5 volts. There are many different flavors of Arduino, but as we already mentioned, the Arduino Uno is the version we'll be using for this class. Another version is the Arduino Mega, which is a bigger board sporting more inputs and outputs and more memory capacity. This one can be used in projects that have more robust requirements. Arduino Gemma is a version of the platform that can be used for your wearable projects since it is very tiny, about the size of a quarter. Arduino Yun is a version of Arduino that has Wi-Fi already built in for your Internet of Things projects. This allows you to easily take your project into wireless mode and enable networked connectivity. The various flavors of Arduino can all be viewed on the Arduino Projects page from the Arduino website. Let's talk about how we actually use the Arduino. You will need software to write your programs in before they can be uploaded to the Arduino board. 
The Arduino IDE, short for Integrated Development Environment, allows us to do this. In another lesson, I will be demonstrating how to install the Arduino IDE and give you a walkthrough of how to use it. The code for Arduino programs can be written in C or C++ and must be compiled before they are uploaded to the on-chip flash memory. To summarize, you should now understand what is the Arduino and be familiar with the Arduino Uno. You were also introduced to some of the other flavors of Arduino that are out there. You were quickly introduced to the Arduino website, which is a great place to get resources and information and network with other makers about the Arduino platform. Finally, you should have a high level overview of the process by which code is uploaded to the Arduino to make your programs work using the Arduino IDE. We will delve into the Arduino IDE in much more detail in another lesson. We are off to a great start so far. Let's move on to our next lesson.